Kate. Hi. Hello. Hello. This is Kate. This is Kate Horseman. I am so happy to have you on Me Time finally, and I'm glad in a way that we haven't done it before now because you're the first episode into this sort of healing world and experience that I sort of want to walk through a little bit for myself and for people listening as well. And I'll just give a little backstory. I'm sure a lot of the psych fans already know who you are. But yeah, I mean, because they know pants. So Dan Miller, so Kate's husband, Dan Miller. I I think a lot of people who listen to this know psych, but I'm not going to assume that. So I did a show for a little while back in the day called Psych that was on USA, ran for like eight years. And our first CD was our dear friend. He's like a family member. And then halfway through filming, he met Kate, who then became like our other family member. And then they got married and they're together and it's beautiful and it's wonderful. And Kate and I, from that point forward, it was one of those, I feel like, you meet people in your life, especially I think it's a little bit more rare as adults too, that we like, you meet somebody and and you might have an instant connection, but at the same time, you also just everybody in their lives and who they are. It's like, I don't know. I don't want to say it's like harder to, to really hone those friendships at the time, but I feel like, uh, we kind of met and it was like, okay, I'm not letting go of you. Um, ever. (laughs) And then now we're here so many, many years later and through many like life things, uh, that we've witnessed, I feel like together, whether physically or just knowingly what the other one has been going through. And Kate, I wanted to, I want you to tell your story of like, sort of how you came into the work that you do now. And like, specifically, I have some questions just around, I think some breath work we're going to actually do together at some point, hopefully in the next week. So I'll be reporting back on that as well. But let's just start. So Kate is just, Kate is like an angel on earth. Kate is like, <laughs> you are, you, I, I, the, 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 the fact that you do this, because when we met, I, this wasn't, I don't believe this is what you were doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, or even in like, this wasn't even in the world of possibility or not possibility, but what you were going to do. So I'm going to let you yeah. explain that and sort of how you came to it. And then I want to get into it, like yeah. around these like new things you've discovered as far as like getting to know ourselves and healing. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. It's sometimes hard for me to even find a linear path of like how, how I arrived, where I arrived. And maybe that's also important for people that are just listening and are, you know, beginning to consider know what healing looks like for them is that it, it, it really truly isn't linear but eventually we we land you know on the path that that feels pretty right and and that's that's something sweet and where I, I tend to find myself these days although I'm always trying to bring creativity and, and nuance into to what that is so I guess you know even thinking back to when we met and it certainly was not where I was um, was in my career I also had previously, though, begun the process. So I'd say that when I was really, really young, if I was to take it all the way back, even though I was a competitive ballet dancer, it was a thing I was supposed to be doing. I was training, you know, Toronto and New York. One of the first things that I would say when people said, what do you want to be when you grew up? I said a doctor. Mm. Clarification. Nowhere in this am I leading to I have become a doctor. (laughs) <laughs> but there was, some, <laughs> there was something in me that was just always really curious about helping people and supporting people. And I think in this way that I also didn't feel supported, and maybe we'll, we'll get into that, it's like I felt like I wanted to be someone for someone that was going through what I was going through. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, that, that was really in the, in, the, in the back burner. I didn't actually think it would tangibly come into a reality of being my work. But I will say through many ups and downs of, of pain and, and real struggle in my teenage years and into my early 20s, I became healthy enough to start to consider what this new life that I was arriving into looked like. And my, the first place I went to was I want to be a therapist. So I actually went to school to be a counselor in my early 20s. By the time I finished that, I was like, oh, I haven't been like a kid yet. 
I'm still figuring out like how to heal myself. I I'm just not ready to step into that role. And so that took me into these other places where, you know, probably closer to around the time we met where I was like, no, like I wanted to experience and explore my creativity in the way that felt meaningful for me at the time, but, but still just not going towards the healing work. I was in my own personal life, but just, I didn't feel like that was what I wanted to do as a, as a profession. I didn't have like, I I didn't have the ground underneath me yet. Right. Right. I suppose, well, there, there were, there was a few things. There was, how, how do I add layers to what I did learn? Because I, uh, I, I wanted to explore the mind, but as soon as I, I, I stayed with the mind long enough, I was like, oh, we're missing something. What about the body? Mm. And so then it took me into like another layer of my education. And then, and then it was like, but what about the soul? What about the spirit? <laughs> and um, slowly over, over many years, I'm making it sound really simple. You know, I, I landed on how do I hold people in a holistic lens where it honors the three dimensionality of working with the mind for certain, but integrating some of these other practices that acknowledge the body and the soul. And, and that was what was most meaningful for me in my own healing and what sort of pulled me along into, I, I, I think, I think this is what we need as support out there in the world. Um, a lot of the catalyst for those last parts that, you know, I, I put into my practice was my own, you know, my own struggle that came up again in my early thirties that I had to explore. I had to deepen and thankfully it not only brought me towards a sense of of reconnection with myself, but what it was I was going to do with my work and, and helping others. It's so I like, it's so interesting because this is, I think what I, what I, you're nailing sort of what I feel like, as you said, is what, is sometimes missing when we focus on one area, like you're talking about the whole body and mind and soul, which I feel is like, how do we explore the soul? How do you explore? Like, how do you get into those parts? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you? I'm like, (laughs) I mean, I kind of have ideas, but I'm genuinely asking. One thing also I love Kate is so connected to animals and nature and we share uh, a love and I think a kind of a some sort of connection to like the spirit world, I would say, uh, through animals a bit. I think we've like talked about this a bit. So how do you explore the soul? Well, I want to know, I mean, how do you A, explore the soul, but how do you tie all of that together in sort of getting to know yourself and then, and then also in like healing? Mm-hmm. Uh, Yeah. Like, how do you, what is the work? You recently told me about a, because I've heard a lot about breath work. People are talking a lot about breath work. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of it on TikTok and like, you know, and I haven't wandered into that space. Like I haven't gone into that space yet. So I can't speak to it of like my own experience of, but I'm really curious about what it is. And recently you left me a voice note talking about like, I think you're calling it breath therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I'm curious if like, okay, go back though. So how do you study the soul? <laughs> I, yes. I have so many questions, Kate. Just on everything you just said. And yeah. you would think in like this time that I know you, like I would, I would know. So, oh, here's Linus, by the way. <gasps> oh, <laughs> hi, Linus. Hi, buddy. He is, um, mm. he always knows when I'm prepping for a podcast because I feel like he thinks I'm like leaving. Oh, yeah. Because I like kind of get things together and I like get organized. And so he starts crying. And then once he's on my lap, he's fine. But um, he feels like a Disney dog. You know, like he has like a, a little character to him already. Like he does. Yeah. Sometimes I play with his hair. He looks really, he's got this natural spike. Mohawk. Yeah. yeah. Like, spike. And also I, uh, I did his DNA test. We'll come back to <laughs> now that we're just talking. And it's like, in my head, I was like, oh, it's like Cavalier and like Jack oh. in Boston. No, no. That's what I thought. No, he's, um. Poodle, Chihuahua, and American Bully. What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's anyway. so wild. So, Kate, okay. Yes. So, okay, I want to go back into like your so your journey from your uh, studying and wanting to get to know like okay, I'm studying the mind, mm. but how? 
I also like, but there's the body and yeah. then there's also the soul. Yeah. So when you decided to sort of go into this work, how did you tie all of them together? And like, what have you kind of learned that, that helps, I would say, like get to that. Get to that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's important to say that the, it, it's ongoing work, right? Our soul, I think, needs constant contributions, right? So we have to be able and willing to sense into, feel into um, what our soul has to say about things. And I, I would say I'm, I'm drawing upon, you know, someone really valuable as a teacher in my life who says that, um, you know, soul moves at the speed of stone, it moves mm -hmm. so slow, right? And we're just so fast and we're so disconnected, which also is a little bit of what I'm talking about when we go into body work yeah. or into somatics or embodiment yeah. is we're actually feeling into the felt sense of what it's like to be human. And when we are able to do that, then we can probably tap into some of these other places that feel um, even more connected like soul or for some people, spirit, when I think of soul, I'm thinking in and, and down, yeah. not, yeah. you know, sort of up. Um, Can I ask you, so just for people who like say we're listening and they are hearing words like somatic therapy, mm -hmm. embodiment, like mm -hmm. can you give a little definition to those just so when, when we hear these words and yeah. we're talking about that kind of therapy that people go, oh, right, it's that. So I think it's important to say that so many treatments are... I don't know if I would even say treatments. Mm, that does, that feels sticky. Yeah, so many approaches now to healing are moving from a mind-centered place into a body-centered place. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, when we thought about, you know, even words like trauma or mental health, like it, it was all very mind-based, like what's going on in the mind. Mm -hmm. But the new science really shows that we're holding so much of that experience in the body and that the body influences the mind and the mind influences the body. And so we'd be just totally remiss to ignore what is happening, happening experientially in our body. Um, so when we think about embodiment, I would say the most simple way of thinking about this is the experience within your body, the experience you're having right now within your body. That as, you know, I'm sitting here with you and I'm tuning into okay, like, oh, my, my heart rate is a little bit faster because I'm speaking to you and I'm excited about this or, mm -hmm. or I feel open through my chest or what, anytime we start to reorient back to our body, we're, we're reorienting back to, um, yeah, a felt sense of what it's like to be us, at, you know, at least in this moment. And sometimes that can unlock the potential of, of healing, right? If something, you know, really harmful or hard has happened, um, or if something really good wants to come through, right? Right. So if something really hard or, so let's say you're aware of, of a feeling that you're having, like, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a, like you just said, like an anxiousness or mm -hmm. something like what then say, uh, I'm going to use this word, even though I don't know that it's like the total right word, but like a trigger, mm -hmm. uh, say like something or someone triggers you, or you're just aware of like where you are, you just said like in your body, say today, and it's a memory, it's a, some, something comes up that sort of, uh, changes, you know, you're aware of like you're uncomfortable or you're, you're stressed, or like you said, your heart rate's going up, you're feeling kind of anxious. Like are you, the work then is to, uh, to what go into that, breathe through that, feel that, learn about that. Yeah. yeah, it really depends on, on on where people are individually at, because for some people that could feel so overwhelming, so yeah. they would become so flooded that that's not a safe experience to do that with. Right. But but interestingly enough, if we eventually can find some way of, of co-regulating or coming back to, um, yeah, just just feeling, yeah, more, I'm going to use the word safe in, in, mm -hmm. in our experience, mm -hmm. we're going to be doing it through our body. So even those, those, those stages that you express there of like, okay, if this is anxiety, what, what would we do? Generally speaking, what we want to feel is actually grounded and we can't feel grounded in our mind. We right. feel, we feel grounded in our body. We feel grounded by our feet being connected to the, to the earth by mm -hmm. noticing our heart. The moment that we realize that there's been disconnection is the moment we actually can connect back to ourselves. 
Right. So there's something really powerful in those moments where we feel like something is going off is like the moment where we actually can bring it back. But it takes obviously some skill and time and, and awareness, very, even awareness. to awareness. Yeah. 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 To yeah. even how to do that. Well, I'm very curious about this too, about the body part. Cause I feel like my mind is so, like, I'm an overthinker and I can be, they can be really powerful. Um, obviously, I mean, it can for everybody. Um, <clears throat> and that's why I think I, I've been curious, but haven't explored yet this world of breath work. Which I haven't, I haven't mentioned yet, but yes, I will. Yes. I mentioned it <laughs> because I also, I've heard, I know you have been uh, teaching and like offering uh like I've had so many times where I like there'd either be a time you would say you were holding a session I'm assuming with other people like it was like a group session or something you were doing and I couldn't do it for some reason and it's happened a couple of times but I'm literally like right there every time like I want to know about this yeah I'll tell you about it tell me about breath work and tell me how you own because I also feel like this is a I feel like there's something like this is where it's at a little bit like when you're when you're talking about the the soul when you're talking about the mind and the body coming back to the body the somatic healing like all of that stuff that is you know that's how that's how we co-regulate like that's how we actually come back to a place of safety mm -hmm. but i feel like in hearing about breath work and now it becoming a very like even a therapy so let's say talk therapy which i do even mm -hmm. he has talked about it. So I want to know how you came to it and then yeah. all and discovered it. And then also sort of what you're finding in the therapy and tying it into. Yeah. Breath. Yeah. Therapy. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so excited to talk about it. So I, one of the reasons I refer to it as breathwork therapy is because I am not only applying the sort of technique of, of breathwork, but I'm also applying all of the other education that I have in other ways, like, like talking, like resourcing from our relationship. Because one of the things that can happen because breathwork can be pretty powerful is that it's important for someone to be able to process that and hold that with you. And I think it's so beautiful how breathwork is out there in the world. And we'll talk about like what's happening. But again, because it can elicit such big responses, I think it's also really appropriate to consider that if people are dealing with mental health issues, severe anxiety, trauma, that doing that in a contained way with someone that really understands that process alongside breath work is really, really valuable. So, so that's why I refer to it as breath work therapy. Right. So this is not like, like, we'll talk about it and go try it on your own kind of a thing. It's the yeah. Real very clear about that. Yeah. So for some people they do, and, and there's right. tremendous benefits to, okay. you know, give, giving it a shot. But I think, um, yeah, I always like to think of like, what, what is the most successful strategy and, and, and really knowing yourself, I suppose, in that and your risk tolerance and how you feel about feelings is important. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's helped me in profound ways. So in short, if I go back, one of the things that I started to notice and anything I notice, it's usually not just noticing with my clients, but noticing within myself, is that we kind of get into this loop again of, of processing. And there can be something good about that, but of like, okay, well, we're talking about this, but what are we actually getting into the feeling part? And, and, and for a lot of the clients I was working with um, and continue to work with, I, I, I adore, um, there's this disconnection from the body. And so if we're staying up here, like what, how, how do we, how do we move it? How do we get into something else? And so I started learning about breath work after experiencing it a bunch of times and having these pretty wild releases where, you know, big range of emotion would come through um, altered states of consciousness. So we hear breath work and it can refer to many different types. This, this type of breath work is a big act of prolonged breath they can sometimes induce these sort of altered states that feel like a psychedelic experience. So, wow. so they're not for the, the faint of heart for sure, but they're, but they're big and very beautiful at times and, and heartbreaking in others. What is the heartbreak? Like what? Okay. So, so having those feelings, you're by going into the breath is the focus on the breath. Like 
what are you accessing mm. that you may not be in your yeah. talk or yeah, yeah, that could be bringing on that beautiful or overwhelming or those yeah. feelings. Yeah. Yeah. So hard to put like a lot of science behind, like what is the mechanism there? Right. Um, all this to say, I think that we're getting to the layers of the subconscious. So we're giving the brain a bit of a task to do in like actively breathing. And then once we hit a certain point of doing that, we kind of figure it out. Our brain is like, oh, I'm used to that. I, I know this pattern. I know what I'm doing. And, and we can't, we kind of go into the no thought process of maybe meditation, but it's very, very different. We're trying, we're not, not trying to think we're just not thinking. Wow. And so we're really in this felt experience of, you know, well, it could be sensory, there could be visuals, there could be memories. Um, and for a lot of people, the defense is just being down a little bit around their emotional experience, which is, I think, mostly where people's healing occurs is being with the fullness of their emotions. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of like the break breakthrough. That's the heart opening moment that breath work is so beautiful for um, that these big cries can come out and then you leave there and you're like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not sad at all, but I had grief pour out of me or right. I, I had joy or I, or I had vision that there's something it's, it's almost as if the breath shakes like these parts of our, our soul or nervous system. That's like, ah, out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's so fascinating to me. Cause I feel like, um, I do like sometimes in my workout or whatever, there's always like a shake off the class. Have you ever, yeah. which you introduced me to the class. I think you told me Did about I? the, I don't know. I think maybe, maybe. <laughs> probably. But there is like a certain thing when you, sh when you, uh, like a shaking through almost like you shake everything off to get to like the, the, the piece. And so I guess, I guess I'm curious what the, okay. Not because we want to be aware of it in the moment or when we're doing it, but is there a moment when you kind of know you've tapped into that space? Mm -hmm. Say me, me uh, or, or the, or the person breathe, like the person breathing, breathing or, or you as therapist, are you thinking like, okay, we're in and out. For example, my therapist. So I have done EMDR before yeah, yeah. I have done EMDR and it is, uh, there are times when I have done it and I'm like, yeah, I'm not like, I'm not in it today. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not really sort of achieving. And then there are other times where I'm it's so very clear. I've tapped into whatever it is I need to tap into that. Even he would say, even the therapist would say, you know, um, okay, now we're in it. So how do you know? And I don't want to say that to be like, it doesn't have to be some, for me, it's usually a, a pretty emotional experience. Uh, when I know I've actually hit the thing that I'm, whether the memory, the visual, the, whatever it is. So in breath work, is there a similar kind of a thing where you're like, okay, I am, or, or is the goal of it simply to, move things around as we, as we need to, or out, um, yeah. or release them in some way to help heal whatever that is holding in that space. Yeah. I sort of think of this as, you know, okay, are we co going in with an intention? And if we are, then we might know that we've hit something good right. or, or it can be really exploratory. Like a lot like, of, you know, yeah. right. Like, like something easy comes from it. Yeah. yeah. I often say, especially to, to my clients where we were moving from like, uh, like some of the more traditional spaces, which I still, I still work in, but like, how do we have a contained experience with surrender? And that's what I think breath work is and surrender and like the loss of control can feel terrifying for most people. Yeah. But this is where we get to practice with it. We're hopefully we're with safe people that understand our experience and what we're trying to do. And so when we let go, some, some magic happens. Sometimes, like I would say my instinct, Maggie, when you say this is that an emotion is accessed, but I've also seen that as like a body moves in a different way yeah. or there's like this different look in the face um, yeah. that like you can tell that there's really something happening behind, behind the scenes. But um, you know, I've had, I've had experiences where people, you know, ha haven't shown very much as far as release, but were deeply in it afterwards, you know, they would tell, tell me. 
Um, and then people who experience a lot and let go of a lot of stuff and they're like, good, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm clear. Yeah. Do you, do you have like, let's say in the process of a session or let's say a class, cause I know that you've held these sessions. So it is a shared experience you can have uh, as well. So, yeah. So I, I don't do that as much anymore. I think because I, I prefer the, the relationship and creating the safety there. There are lots of people that do do that, but just for like a little bit focused attention on, on, on what, uh, on, on people working with me feels, feels right. Um, but it's certainly possible. Yeah. Do you have, feel like, I love that I'm like, I've, I'm asking all these questions. I'm like, as a, as a good podcast host, but also because yeah. I am, uh, very, I've been curious about this experience and I love that this is how, yeah. this is like my first, this is like my pre-session. Yes, it is. <laughs> All of the questions. Yeah. But you set, so is there a, um, I'll just ask, is there like a writing or a, mm. is there sort of, oh, you mentioned integration. So you, for the listeners, Kate and I were possibly going to have this session before today's podcast. My naive brain was like, oh, I'll, I have an hour before a dinner. <laughs> Let's, I can do then. And Kate's like, I think you might need a little time just with the whole experience. And that's kind of what I want to talk about a little bit is like, because you mentioned having almost a bit of a, and I don't really know psychedelics that well. That's another mm -hmm. thing I want to kind of explore um, throughout this process, but uh, achieving that almost uh, that level of a feeling. And then the space after to integrate like integration, which I know is a part of a lot of therapy actually is like that sort of like re like you, you sort of almost have to re-enter the world. Yeah. yeah. So it, what, what is this about the, the, the experience you go into when in breath work going back into the world, it takes you a minute to sort of recalibrate mm -hmm. to what our earthly or grounded life what is the integration part and why do we need to leave a lot of room for it yeah. <laughs> or some extra room for it? Yeah. I mean, I think the first thing is just that we literally don't leave any room for these things in our lives. Right. That's a good point. Right. Even me, I was just, I have an hour before the dinner. Why don't we do it then? Because like, I wouldn't even associate, you know, I'm thinking it's a session, a therapy session ish or whatever. Of course this would have a, an effect of some kind that I don't even know yet. Yeah. And, and also like, I feel, <laughs> does Linus have something to say about this? He yeah. does. <laughs> I, I really do think that he does. So I think he probably does. Uh, and maybe it's something about moving slower too. Right. I think our, our world is just. So Linus for sure adopted me. I, I, he, I signed some papers, but he was like, okay, lady, yeah. like I'm coming to get you. We're going to ground. We're going to get our shit together mm. and, and we're going to open our heart back up because we've been a little, uh, shut down for a minute. And so he knows what's up. So yeah. Linus is like, he's chilling. Cause he already knows everything you're talking about right now. Yeah, but yeah. He's yeah. like, I have studied this stuff, ladies. Let's move <laughs> on. Um, <laughs> He's like, how do you think you got the idea for this like episode with Kate? It was me. Okay, it was me. Um, yeah, I think I think there's just like this 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 way that we are in like hustle culture without even realizing we're in hustle culture that like we finish something we're like oh like great moving on. Um, but there's this this really sweet spot that I think happens. You know whether we're talking about. Um, breath work or even after sessions or you know certainly different topic that you'll be exploring with psychedelics the integration piece is so key because you're literally exposing maybe not exposing your brain but your brain is able to make these incredible changes and so I like to think when we're coming out of breath work and that's what I, I can speak to obviously is you know that we're we're exposed. There's, there's something raw. There's something really tender about what you're walking, um, walking out into the world with, right? We are so usually, you know, so armored up. And so what do we want to do with that opened up version? You know, I, I sort of, I don't know why Maggie, you're going to laugh, but I'm thinking about, <laughs> do you remember the movie Cocoon? Okay. Yeah. So that, that glowing being <laughs> the CGI of the eighties. I love it. 
so, 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 so you almost want to kind of protect that. There wants to be this element of self care. And I also think that if we look at breath work from, um, from accessing altered states of consciousness, which I've experienced with a lot of my clients experience, what are we taking from that altered state yeah. state and putting back into our life? And we don't do that just by moving on. We're like, what, what medicine was there for me? What, yeah. what was it that I sensed and I felt or I saw that is meaningful to the healing that wants to come through in my life? Yeah. So the integration just allows us to move from the experience into the life, into the healing, right? There's yeah. the active part. And then this is like, oh, like how do I lay down the muscle mass, the tissue that allows this to come through? I feel like um, this is something also just for me, my own personal like curiosity about it is that is the the body part and the grounding part, just because I feel like even with what I do, I mean, podcast host, yes, but actress first, that there is, there's like a, a natural, well, I use the word sort of embodiment. Like I almost sometimes feel like it is easier for me to sort of step into some other version than to just be in the me that is just me, kind of like what you're talking about, stepping out in that sort of exposed, uh, mm -hmm. naked way a little bit, which is why I'm, one of the reasons I'm making this podcast is a is a facing of a fear. But I also think that I have a, a little bit of fear around not breath work, but just the avalanche of potential emotion that could be yeah. behind it. And I guess I would ask just for anyone listening to, if they are afraid of that, if they are, or something is stopping them from looking behind that door or whatever, you know, however we want to say it, what would you is this where you would say the piece that's important is having a therapist or someone there with absolutely. you to guide the experience, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Ab absolutely. Because I think it's really important that we honor those feelings. You know, there's a time where they become protective and, and there's a time where they can feel harmful and the same story repeats itself. So, you know, in considering the fear that you're talking about, like maybe it feels time to like, oh, I, I want to go towards that fear. I want to understand what it feels like. I want to understand what exists, you know, right right behind its shoulder. Um, and then other times that fear may be too hard for people to challenge. And it's not that they won't eventually, but like, how can we work towards that? How can we, um, how, how can we lay enough groundwork so that approaching a feeling is... Um, is is okay and it, I'm, I'm just like taking a pause here and thinking about how so much of our culture mm -hmm. doesn't leave much room at all for us to be feeling human beings it's like we're so out of practice with yeah. our fear our sadness our grief our even our joy right like we just we're not in connection to it so yeah, I I can definitely sink in. I think the biggest thing that I like, I guess, recently discovered, and then it highlighted everything else you just said was this uh, relationship to not as people, but just as a culture, as you're saying, to grief, um, mm -hmm. as I have was in um, a level I had never really experienced before, and then also as I looked around and talked to more people about it it was this kind of shared thing of like every, everyone yeah. is walking around in some form with some form of grief. And yet it isn't something that we, you know, um, acknowledge all the time or, you know, so it has to almost be this quiet thing that we have, which is okay. It's, it can be private, but like also even when it comes to, um, healing beyond that, you kind of feel like you're on your own a little bit. Um, I mean, you are, but, and they're obviously they're therapists and healers, but like as a people, um, but here's what I love. Okay. What I'm getting at is as a people, it is not as, as often recognized. I read a book talking about like heartbreak, uh, mm -hmm. breakups and the loss of a pet and things that sometimes aren't sort of held in the same category mm -hmm. as maybe other loss. Um, but that people experience them uh, just as 
deeply and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether we don't take time off or do anything around that. But I think one of the things that I'm excited about and why I'm sort of starting this little series is that I think we're getting, as a people, I think we're also curious, Mm -hmm. more curious about alternative, about knowing ourselves and looking at pieces. Also, I think since COVID, there was such a collective trauma that everyone went through that is like we're still sort of recovering from that it's kind of a different time. I, I don't know if you feel this way, but... I'm excited because I feel like there is this new opening for uh, conversations around, well, I'll say what works for you, but also just alternative approaches, to use your word, uh, mm-hmm. to therapy and healing. Mm-hmm. I feel like for a long time it was sort of talk talk to someone and talk mm-hmm. therapy. Talk therapy is wonderful. And I'm not saying that at anything negative there or that at any movement is moving away from that. I think there's just like the and the and also movement that's happening can all work together Mm -hmm. Uh, because I'm talking to so many people now who I know a lot of people who do breath work. I know a lot of people who swear by breath work. Like it is a game. I feel like it's become the, it's a, it's a game changing. I can't, again, this is why I'm like, I want to do it. I want to get in there. I want to get in there. But I also, I really do feel like this is one of the things that people are discovering along with their talk therapy and other well, things. The, yeah, exactly. This is the thing. How how can you bring this in combination with, with, with what's alive for you in your life right now so that it isn't just a one size fits all approach? Again, I, I, I think that's so, it's so outdated. We know it's not working, but we can bring it into having multiple modalities working to support, yeah. Um, what it means to be human. And I think that's happening. That's Mm -hmm. what I'm excited about. And I think more people like you, like Kate, what would, what would you, if I were to say Kate is a uh, wellness coach, teacher, life, what I what, love the multiple choices here. I mean, well, because I'm like you're everything. Like I don't oh, know. That's okay. Know how, because just even as a human, you're you're just di- like you meet Kate and you immediately everything that she's talking about that she how she works with people. There's a reason that they they come to Kate, and that is because within five minutes in her presence, you are grounded. You're connected. You're making eye contact. You are like I'm aware. I drop into like a different, like Kate brings that into whatever space she's in with you. I'm not kidding. It's since the day I met you mm. that like, it's such an incredible thing that you, but it's just you. I want to say it's a thing that you do. It's not, it's just who you are. And so now that this is sort of the, the world that you're in, as far as, again, I don't want to get it wrong, coaching, teaching, helping, guiding, healing. What is it? What, what would your, what is Kate? <laughs> What it, it's something I'm continually, continually exploring. I would say generally, I would call myself a holistic therapist. A holistic therapist. Yeah, but yeah. under that, you know, also breathwork therapist, and right. and none of those terms. Also, like it can it can be whatever it needs to be. Uh, I was just doing some writing about this. It's like, oh, can we just call it like soul tending or what it means oh, to be human? Right? I love that I, soul nurturing. She's a soul nurturer. Yeah, mm-hmm. something like that. But I do, um, I agree. I think, okay. I think holistic therapist is, it sums that up really well. Yeah. Cause yeah. you're the whole, the whole thing. I just, um, yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Oh, I was just going to say that, you know, as you were talking about grief, I just feel like it's such an important topic, Maggie. Like it just, I feel like the minute we go towards grief, there's like, oh, people feel like this heaviness of like, oh, that's not what I want to, it's not what I want to talk about. And I will say that the grief work has, it's not oppositional to breath work at all, because I actually think a lot of people that come to me for breath work are actually in the process of grieving something. Right. And, um, and it feels hard to go to those places alone and, and becomes just a very valuable and sacred place to release emotion that, that sort of walks with us, us daily. But I think grief opens us up to life if, if we let it. Um, and that, and that excites me too. And that, that's not to say, put a spin on, on, on grief as, as something that's positive, but I know we've, we've spoken to this too in, in our loss of, yeah, feeling so much deep, more depth of connection because of, of that loss. Um, and, 
I remember a couple of years ago when I, I was working um, in, in a grief training. I'm just finishing actually a grief training right now. Um, it was the first time anyone had said to me that what I was experiencing was grief. And I have grieved so many things in my life, like or, or should have, have grieved many things in my life. There were so many losses that I've experienced in my life. Like, yeah. and, and no one, you know, even people very, very close to me said, this is what grieving looks like. And I remember feeling so, so much pain that weekend and so much relief yeah. because I was like, oh, that's, that's what that is because we associate it in our culture, of course, with, with death and with loss that way. But it is so many other things. We are coming out of so much grief. We're exposed to grief every single day when we pick up our, our phones. So I actually, I can tell, like, I just get passionate talking about this because I feel like grief is actually a portal to recognizing a way back to being around community, to re being around being in relationship with our emotions, to being um, connected to our ancestors and whatever capacity that is. So grief is a very important portal in this work. And so I'm just, I'm grateful that you named that as, as part of this. I feel like that I'm with you only because this is, I've had an experience with that over the last few years, but also I think because of that, it's, it has shined a light on as you're sort of talking about like grief in general and that it isn't just necessarily associated with, um, you know, the, the, I think black and white ways that we mm -hmm. do kind of accept grief or talk about grief. It's sort of, as you were mentioning, just like picking up our phone, like there's just a whole, it's a, but okay. And, and that said, it's funny. I have a friend who would say to me, how is your grief doing today? Oh for a little while, like even after peanut died. And then, you know, even recently about something and it was like, there's something even about just ask what your reaction just now with that question is like, because everyone has, yeah, some version of it and it isn't talked about in a way that is, I don't know, the sort of daily, the daily grief that everyone is processing. Yeah. And and constantly processing. And grief is also, as you just said, it can be like, I've learned to let myself have whatever that moment is that comes up. If it is a, if it's a, uh, I need to cry for a little, I, if I'm feeling overwhelmed and usually when I'm feeling overwhelmed, my reaction is to just like cry, even though I don't necessarily know why I'm crying. I eventually kind of do know why I'm crying. Mm -hmm. There is a feeling after that is it's like relief but it's also like i'm so glad i let myself like i can i can go on differently in a five minute period if i just let myself have that mm -hmm. stop <laughs> that mm -hmm. like really intense up i feel like i can go about my day differently or uh than i would have if i hadn't because i would have stayed in that sort of tightly wound spot i was in mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have been able, it's such a release and it is such, I love that you said a portal because I also feel like from grief, uh, you know, whether it's art, like in painting, I'm just, this is my personal experience, like just what I have experienced, but like that everything that kind of comes after the release or in the release, which is interesting because it is how you're talking about breath work too. There's almost like a creative explosion that mm -hmm. happens, even if it's just sitting and being quiet and listening to some music for a little bit. It's hard to just wipe your tears away or step out of that moment and go right back into the day. I realize everything I'm saying about grief is exactly what you've sort of been describing around yeah. breath work. Yeah. And, um, you know, that, end, that end piece, Mags, is like, oh, that's soul there. That's right. when you've been in connection with soul. It's like, oh, I was able to be with this emotion that tried yeah. to like, you know, Again. Hijack my day, hijack my body. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But instead, I could connect with it. I could let myself have that. And in having that, I actually am in the resolution of something. My soul is allowed to be present there because yeah. it trusts this experience. It yeah. knows that that was right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, and yeah, that's when I want to paint usually. 
Yeah. That's, yeah. That's where that goes for me. That's why I was asking if there was like a writing or anything that there's like sort of comes with the post experience, but that's different for everybody. My, I think, I think drawing is, is one of them. Sorry. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not good at talking. <laughs> I'm not forgetting that we're on a podcast and I'm talking over here. Oh my God, please talk over me. I want you to talk. Kate, I will run my mouth for an entire hour if you don't stop me because it's just such a world that I'm like, I'm, I'm in the safe space of talking to my friend about it right now, even though yeah. this is going to go out to the world. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've had, you know, I, and I could talk about it with you forever, but I also don't, you know, maybe I'll just have, maybe we'll do a, maybe I'll have, I'll have my breathwork session mm -hmm. um, or maybe the beginning of a series of them was we, we, and I'll definitely share that experience, but I almost like want you to come back on to sort of talk about that together as well. Of course. Yeah. I can. yeah. yeah um, I'm very excited about that. I could talk to you forever, but I, but Kate is like also like an animal, uh, whisperer, uh, slash, uh, I do think like you can step, I feel like into the woods and literally the wolves, the eagles, the, the birds and any, any being will flock to Kate. Mm. She is a walking, like you're just a walking spiritual mm -mm. magnet or something. Uh, being uh, Anyway, Kate. <laughs> hi. Hi. <laughs> true. So we've just scratched the surface of angel on earth. Kate Horseman and what she does for people, but also this world of breathwork. Kate, will you tell the listeners your Instagram or where they could learn, follow, hear you, any anything, everything? Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. So you can find me on Instagram at Kate Horseman Health and on my website at katehorseman.com. And I'm on there, you know, semi-regularly, not, not too often, but if people listening are curious and want to talk to you, can they go on your website and book a yeah. session or talk so, to you? Technically be email, reach out, reach out to me, connect okay. via email. And then I, I, I see if there's, if there's room. Okay. Um, that's my sort of my vetting process. Um, yeah. Yeah. Kate, you've like become like, it's just so exciting. Is this wonderful? I don't know. I have this, like, I feel like we've known each other for a minute and like, I hear you talk now and I'm like, this is what you've always done. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not what you've always done professionally, like this is what you've always walked with. Like, this is who you are. Anybody who would get to learn from you or be have these experiences. That's the other thing about Kate. You'll, you the safety part, like that's the number one for me in these, a lot of these experiences is like, if you don't feel safe with the person that you're with, and as you all can hear, and if you're watching this on the YouTube, we'll see, I, I have a feeling you're going to get a few, I, I have a feeling people will be reaching out after this. <laughs> wow. Anyway, whether you have room or not, um, because I also know you have a lot of, a lot of clients now too. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's, if I, if I can, yeah, make people feel in any way more comfortable in being who they are and what they're experiencing, then I will have done my job. I, um, I, I that was something I, I, I didn't necessarily, it wasn't like my intention. I just knew that I wanted to help people, but, um, I, uh, yeah, whenever I get that compliment, it, uh, it, it feels so meaningful because I just remember being in so many spaces in my own personal journey and work where I didn't feel that with someone. And, um, and I just, I strive to make that, that connection with, with humans. It's so, it's so vital, but yeah. Love you so much. I love you so much, buddy.